preview first. Blah, blah, blah. All right. What is going on, guys? Happy Wednesday. We got Mr. Michael from Aaron's Aquarium on today. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Good, thank you. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. I'm going to go off. There you go. I'm in the background. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> Getting all giggly over there. Excellent, excellent. Just a little innuendos flying around. Makes <laughs> me smile. <laughs> so, um, what do you prefer, Michael? Hard or soft plumbing? Ooh, I've got a bit of both on my tank. Yeah. Yeah, so, both. hard on the drains and soft on the returns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't start the stream that way. <laughs> Mind in the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so on a completely unrated, unrelated note, right before I started the stream, I spilled water on my mouse and it quit working, and it was right clicking for every click and ah so hopefully it's all good now how to grab a different keyboard quickly with that charge so hopefully everyone's doing good today <sighs> my snail spawn today there you go free cleanup crew that's all right greg how you doing homegrown frags what is up blue basin aquatic sam osborne aaron's aquarium reef keeper mccallum's reef hot ashes happy wednesday guys uh, run soft in my 75 gallon hard on the 40. <laughs> Mine's still in the gutter. <laughs> I'm such a child. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so today is more of a Q and a stream, a little bit of just of a chit chat, hang out. Um, if you guys got any questions as we go, we can pop, uh, let me know and we can hit those. And there was a few in the chat, which I can pull up to get to in a bit. But first of all, how, how is the, the one? The new wife in the background going. I don't know if that works, but if that works. It's the wrong works. side, man. You're 30 oh, seconds behind. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it's on the right side, I don't know. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's going really, really well. Um, tanks just about finished with a dirty stage. Um, everything's everything's doing well. It's uh, It's been one of those for me, this one. It's been a real, um, it's just been fun. You know, mm -hmm. it's like every stage of this tank has just been perfect yeah oh yeah i was wrong side i'm just watching the replay <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> but yeah every stage of this tank's just been brilliant so far um i've got all the fish currently in quarantine nice over there, in the quarantine tank over there so really? i'm just waiting for is them he, to finish cooking is your quarantine tank a plastic rubber made bin no well no because we don't have rubber made well what, what equivalent plastic yeah, plastic container um, those plastic tubs that you put all your stuff yep. in and you put it in your bed or whatever else. Mm -hmm. Just a storage container. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. So just throwing it out there, you don't even need to buy a tank. You can sneak a quarantine tank out of anything. Something that holds water. Yep. And then yep. when you're done, when yep. you're finished, storage. you can pack it all down, <laughs> put it in the cupboard, or use it for storage. Throw there a DVD, you. if anybody has DVDs nowadays. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Sure, I don't have any DVDs in them. They're all gone. No, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's it's a dead, it's a, just a dead simple thing. It's just two hang on the back filters, mm -hmm. a heater, um, and a little wave maker just to agitate the surface or get good oxygenation. Mm -hmm. That's it. Plastic tub. Perfect. Super easy. And a couple of pieces of glass that I've had in my shed to stop the fish from jumping. Yeah, I like it. So how how does it? How do you like going to a smaller tank from a bigger tank? Because most of the time people go bigger and bigger and bigger. Wow. Now this time you went smaller. That's you know to be honest. Um, when I first when I first started talking about this, everybody was saying I'm downgrading, and that was a bit of a thing for me. And this might be a good topic for now mm -hmm. because a lot of people feel that the only way you can upgrade a reef tank is by going bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that's the only way you can upgrade. But I personally did feel that this tank behind me is far and beyond an upgrade from the wife just because everything is just better you know the tank itself is borderline invisible because it's an acrylic tank so you can't see any black lines where the mm -hmm. silicone is you know obviously the lighting up here that's the exact same lighting that I was running on the wife 
So yep. I had those three lights running a seven foot system. Mm -hmm. Now I've got them compacted down onto a four. Yep. Um, Lots of light. So cool. Yeah, that's a lot of mm -hmm. light. It's got two gyres on it as well. Same float, same gyres that was on the seven footer. Mm -hmm. So I've got, you know, even more flow. The cabinet, you know, is a proper cabinet with doors and everything, not a DIY thing made out of scaffolding. You know, everything about it is just better. So although it's smaller, I personally feel it's a massive upgrade from the last one. Um, nice. And so far, I'm finding it easier as well. What What are the dimensions? So it's four foot long. Yep. It's two and a half foot deep from nice. the back. And it's two foot tall. Nice. Those are nice dimensions. Yeah. So, and... Another thing as well is my previous one. I threw my toys out my pram a little bit with a previous one. <laughs> the wife was 27 inches tall. Yep. Um, and I wanted it 30 inches tall. Mm -hmm. But the company that was building it for me actually was Mr. Chan, Nick Chan, because he was I was doing it through him. Mm -hmm. He said to me, if you want it to be 30 inches, it's going to be an extra 300 pounds for the tank. I was like, why? It's three inches. It's like okay. 100 pounds an inch after... 27 because you'd have to get 15 mil glass rather than 12. Um, so I was like, no, and I was proper upset that I had to sacrifice this three inches. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really, really, really upset. But as I used the tank, it mm -hmm. was like that 27 inches was horrible. I hated it. You know, climb, having to try and get in and, you know, all that type of stuff and going up ladders, etc. So two foot tall is a godsend, you know yep. what I mean? And I don't think I'd ever go higher than this. Mm -hmm. I'd happily go deeper, well, two foot, three foot, but not higher. Yeah, uh, well, the, I guess it depends on your arm length too, but what I did with my tank is I basically made it to my armpit. That was, that was how I determined how high it's going to be. And yeah. I, I shaved two inches off the stand to add two inches to this tank, which is the last one. So you can actually reach it because it's a pain trying to use stuff to reach otherwise. So, so uh, Phil, Reef Keeper, Phil's just asked me, have I scratched the acrylic yet? I have. Oh, <laughs> I was going to ask you that too. And it happened before I put water in it because. Aquascaping? Do you know those catch a window vax? Yeah. Like this, like basically window. The squeegee. Thing, but yeah. They suck. Um, I used one of them on it and it must have had a bit of grit or something on it from, I don't know, oh. just from being laid around. And I, it just left a little graze. On the on that so it's it's on the side so it's not too bad inside or outside yeah it's not noticeable and you can see it when algae goes in it but you just go over mm. it with a flipper and it's gone so yeah yeah i have scratched it already but i am very very delicate to be honest yeah very delicate i've i've been scared of acrylic <clears throat> so i'm curious to see how this holds up long term i'm always worried about it just because i'm like ocd with scratches well to be honest i've got the um flipper max mm -hmm. and as long as i keep it away from the gravel you know, it's okay. I just use the soft pad side. Yep. Um, I've took the blade off. I'm not using the acrylic blade either. Mm -hmm. I'm just using the pad. And I've got, have you seen that flipper magnifying glass? Yeah. How is it? Do you like it? It's great. It's really nice. good. But the great thing is the magnet and the pad, mm -hmm. the glass cleaners as well. So as oh. I'm going around, I didn't realize until I was looking at my corals through the magnifying glass and then I looked <laughs> through the side and I saw this trail <laughs> where yeah. I'd been. So it's clean, it cleans the glass as well. It's brilliant. Yeah, there you go. Bonus. That's all right. <laughs> Beauty. So can you reach the sand bed? Uh, I still have to go on a ladder because obviously okay. it's still small. But if I'm on a ladder, yeah. Oh, actually. I can sort of, no. Well, I can sort of get in it. Yeah. It's a lot more, a lot, lot more accessible than it was. And it's got acrylic lids mm -hmm. on it. It's got acrylic lids on the sump as well. That's so nice. um, I changed the RO. I still had three liters left in the bottom of my container, which is 25 liters, which is, is that five gallon? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, and I, I changed it after 14 days. Was it 14 yeah. days? I was, yeah, for, something like that. So it, I don't That's go good. through RO water at all. Well, lids make a huge difference. You, oh, your, your lid just has little holes drilled in it, right? Like yeah. a cook? Nice. Yeah. But it makes a huge difference, though, even though it's got those holes. Mm -hmm. Like, if you look just over there, if you see the wall just above the plug, yeah. paint off because of how much condensation was in Oh, it. yikes. Oh, yeah, the tons. Yeah, there was a lot. I was going through 25 litres of RO every, every couple of days, mm -hmm. two days, maybe three days max. Yep. And now I've gone 14 days. 
and I'm not even that's, it. That's Just nice. Change. Didn't even need to change it. Yeah. <laughs> Kim's asking, Michael, are you in PJs? I think he is. It's like 11. <laughs> I, 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 I forgot to change. <laughs> <laughs> they look like little they look like little hot dogs or hamburgers it's, 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 it's 11 o'clock at night here and i'm that i'm gonna go and get changed i'm just gonna think about nobody's gonna see my lower ass i'm gonna stay in my pc bottom <laughs> just need to stand up <laughs> it's past your bedtime it's a good excuse <laughs> hey the marvel though so it's all oh, right. they're marvel nice <laughs> excellent excellent I thought they were like little like hot dogs or something. <laughs> <laughs> you need to show everybody your reflexes. <laughs> oh, I know, eh? I'm wearing them right now, too. <laughs> oh, those are great. They kind of made oh. me happy. Except there's a waterfall on the butt for some reason. On one side. The whole thing's all like coral reef. And I'm like, why is there a waterfall? This makes no sense. I bet it's, it's got a hidden meaning. I bet it's it, got a hidden meaning. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, um, so asking, how thick is your tank? I'm assuming it's acrylic. 15 mil 15 mil so, yeah 15 mil acrylic it's euro braced mm -hmm. and then the lids so the euro brace has been routed so that the lids sit inside the euro brace so everything sits flush on the top yep nice it's pretty good. i love how it i love how it looks the uh, the lids do sag though um mm -hmm. after a while so both of the lids are identical so i'll just swap them <laughs> yeah nice just flip them all just flip them over and swap them i can't i can't just flip them because um each side of the lid's got like a, a cut in it for the cable for the gyre. Mm. So all we do is just switch them over and then, then yeah, that works. By the way, works. Yeah, it, it works fine. It might be worse seeing if you can get the same lid made out of polycarbonate because it won't sag as much as acrylic will. Right, okay. So it might be something to look we'll into. Look in. I'll have a look into that. Yep. Yeah. To be good. It, it's, it does its job. It's not the end of the world. A little flippy flip every week or two, you're good. That's it. Job done. Oh, I know. So yeah, so I'm loving it. Beautiful. Um, when I was asking earlier about some what people wanted on a stream, one of the things that came up was about moving a large tank. Um, so, I mean, you just moved one out. Um, you kind of moved... Actually, did you sell all your contents? You know what, sorry? All the stuff that was in your old tank? Like your contents? Um, um, apart from, like, obviously most of the equipment, like the lights and the gyres and stuff, I kept. Yep. But everything else, I kept a few corals. Like, I've got my Lobo still... Are in, uh, are in a, uh, and just a few odd like uh, and two colonies uh, two colonies I think I kept but everything else I got rid of mm -hmm. um, and it was <laughs> it was dead weird because the tank was here and it took six of us to bring the tank in it had to go in through the window um, yeah. and there was only four of us to take it back out and yeah. it was it was one of those where our minds played tricks on us a little bit You're like it's where... going to be heavy yeah that was it and because we said in our heads it was heavy that was it it was like we just put our fingers on it, it was like oh no i can't do it <laughs> so it was like it was like it, it was it took us about 10 or 15 minutes to even even try mm -hmm. we're thinking how can we get more people what can we do this is going to be too much it's going to be too much and then when we finally said well we've got no choice we're gonna to have to do it it was like Oh, actually, it's not that heavy. <laughs> totally <laughs> psyched yourself out. <laughs> nice. How thick was your old tank? Pardon? How thick was your old tank? 12 mil. 12? Oh, awesome. Okay, that's not too bad. But it was a big it's tank, 12. though. Seven foot, right? Seven by two and a half by two. Well, yep. 27. Yeah. It's a good size. Um, Ohio Streets. Which is better, glass or acrylic? That depends. They each have pros and cons. Ac acrylic is clearer. Like, it's more transparent. You don't notice as much. Um, your seams are basically blended like amazing. Um, so super clear, but the downfall acrylic, and it's lighter. It's probably stronger if you smack it. You don't, you're not going to crack it. But it scratches easy, which is the big downfall. Um, glass is harder to scratch. Freaking heavy to move, though. Um, you got your seams, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a trade-off, to be honest, between the two. I personally think acrylic's better than glass <clears throat> because, like you said, it's lighter it's clearer you know and they're the main things that we're interested in when it comes to an aquarium but like you said it does scratch easy so if you're a little bit heavy-handed or you know you're easily distracted whilst doing your glass cleaning or your acrylic cleaning then mm. don't bother but the only thing is especially in this country acrylic is probably maybe twice or three times more than glass so this aquarium behind me for example mm. was three thousand pounds Whereas if I was to buy that in class, it probably half or even a third of that price. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So acrylic here is very, very expensive. So, mm. and if, unless you, you know, unless you've got the money in your pocket and you, you know, you're, you're soft touched, mm. then I'd go blast. <laughs> yeah. But you can see like, there's no, there's no silicone lines. There's no, nothing. It's just, it's just a box, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it's like almost a box you can't see. It doesn't distract you from yeah. your tank. You know hey, what I mean? was your last tank regular glass or Starfire glass? Uh, Starfire. We call it Opti White over here, but okay. low iron glass, yeah. Yep. Now, yeah. a lot of people say Starfire is softer than normal glass and easier to scratch. Did you ever have any issues with yours? No. No? And I, I was brutal with that tank. You know, yeah. I used to have the flipper with the blade and I'd go in right into the gravel. And, you mm -hmm. know, I think there was one scratch. I ended up getting one scratch on it and that was it. Nice in two and a half years so no i didn't have an issue with that um but yeah this one though you gotta be like kid gloves i bought yeah. some i bought some of those uh is it those magic erasers yeah nice those? these are brilliant these are really yeah. good i used to have a, a bent glass tank and i'd always use that to get the corners clean <laughs> yeah well these are great you just like get right in there but the only thing is you've got to put your hand in the tank to use them so mm -hmm. i need to work out something else i got the flipper scraper card yep. scraper thing that's mm -hmm. work. that seems to be working quite well nice um doo -doo -doo. oh one other pro of acrylic is it's easier to fix scratches because you can buff them out you can sand them and like go to lighter and lighter sand like you would on a buffing a car essentially and you could buff out scratches that's one plus um so derek was asking any easy way to fix scratches in glass doable yes easy no um you same thing you got to buff and go thinner and thinner and thinner but it's a lot mm -hmm. more work in glass it's possible and, it, and with glass as well if you go across it and if you can catch it with your nail mm -hmm. if, you, if the scratch stops your nail then it's too just forget it yeah you're not getting you're not getting that out because uh, you'll just to get that far down you'll reduce the structural integrity of the glass anyway so it just won't even be worth doing yep um i scrolled away on me already but someone was asking about the overflows in your tank they said how are they i think they're asking if they're quiet I haven't seen those ones over here so I'm using the ones by Ultra Reef, they're called. They're called mm -hmm. Ultra Reef Drain and Charge or something like that. And they are... You hear anything? Bear in mind Not really. Can you quiet. hear anything? I'm assuming you're telling us it's quiet. <laughs> no, I can't. Quiet. Isn't it? Yeah. It's not silent. But... No, don't get me wrong. It's not silent. Uh, one thing I've noticed as well is because the this side of the tank, the overflow side, is mm -hmm. hard piped. Yep. So what I did this time was, with my last tank, I did everything on 90 degree elbows, but I found when the water was leaving the tank and coming down, when it hit a 90 degree, it was really loud, you know, like this sort of like the splashing in the elbow. <clears throat> so this time I did 42, 45s to give it more of a slide, which has made it quieter. But I think, and I'm toying with the idea of just soft piping it. So again, so the silicone, just deadens the noise of the water traveling down yep. and which will make it even quieter. But because only half of the overflow is full, mm -hmm. there is that ever so slight air noise. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you get that noise of the air going in as well as water, but it's, it's nothing like the last tank. Nothing like the last tank. Was the last one loud? What? Was the last one loud? Not really. Well, yeah, it was a lot louder than this, but yeah. it wasn't loud. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it wasn't silent either. Um, I've, I've also, as well, I used a random flow generator on this. Yep. <clears throat> but on my last one, um, it didn't seem to work very well, the random flow generator. You know, it, it moved the water, but not mm. like that much. And But since I've got a I've got a single one this time and I've got a larger return pump, mm -hmm. um, the flow that comes out of that thing is ridiculous. I can mm -hmm. turn the tires off. And the water will be like that nice. just with the random flow generator but then what happens is, is for the drains mm -hmm. the water goes up and down on the drains and then that makes it like, <laughs> yeah nice which nice. is a bit irritating so uh awesome nice with the rfgs i found the more flow you put through the better they work like if you don't yeah. have enough flow then i don't see like a huge advantage but it, it as you raise the flow it seems to just get more and more random action from it yeah, I had to turn my pump down actually because mine goes up to ten, um, and I'm down to five on the pump because coral the the SPS corals weren't even liking it. Even mm -hmm. though it was random and it wasn't getting bombarded, 
it was too strong. You know, you could put your hand in front of the random floor generator. And it felt like, do you know those sort of like shiatsu massage yeah. machines that you put in your chair and you feel, feel like... the ball? Yeah, you yeah. feel that ball going around. But that's what it felt like on my hand. It felt like I had literally like something rotating nice. around my hand. That's how strong it was. But yeah, they're really good. Nope, oh, that's awesome. Okay, now I'm also seeing on both sides of you, you got the gyre, max spec gyres on both sides. That's the 350? 350s, yeah. 350. So. Nice. How are you liking them? Love it. Love yep. it. The whole idea for this tank is, to be honest, and this is, this is, he's already in here right now, I can see him. Um, this is heavily inspired by Phil. Mm hmm. Super. Yep. Um, you may or may not know this, but I love Phil's tank. This is like, a nice tank. CJ's, CJ's just done a video on it as well. Yep. I love Phil's tank. I've loved Phil's tank for ages. I love the fact that he's gone through so much adversity with losing fish, losing dip, you know, going through the mm -hmm. white spot, through the, I think it was velvet that he had at the time and all these different things. I'm always following in the background. I may not comment on videos and everything, but I'm always watching. <laughs> and Phil's tank has gone through hell, but you look at it and you think to yourself, it's definitely been worth it because you look mm -hmm. at it and the way it's laid out, the way his corals are placed, everything looks to be placed perfectly. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? From his zoas to his acros, you know, this, that, and the other thing looks brilliant. So that's why this scape has been created the way it's been scaped, uh, created because I wanted the scape to really be able to display corals well, mm -hmm. but also provide them with really good flow. So probably the fattest sections of the scape are like that. Yeah. You know, you're only really putting one coral. You can't really put two corals side by side because there's not a space, but the flow all around the tank is brilliant. Combine that with those two gyres, creating just crazy, crazy flow and mm -hmm. a random color generator. The SPS corals are not going to want for anything in there at all. So I'm hoping to just grow something out that nice. if it touches the quality of fills, I'll be happy, man. Perfect. Good. Good goals. I like it. Yeah, Phil, I watched CJ's video actually yesterday or today or whenever it was. But yeah, gorgeous tank. It was a really nice tank. Yeah, it's an absolute stop. <laughs> I'm blushing stops. Thanks for the kind words. <laughs> <laughs> You're into Phil. You got it's an awesome tank, buddy. Honestly, it's an absolute credit. If uh, 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 Somebody said it, uh, uh, Rico. Rico said it a while ago that your tank is sort of like your business card. So mm -hmm. to speak, you know, until you've sort of like got a reef, it's difficult for you to be able to tell people how to keep a reef, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And when he said it, first time he said it, I thought, well, that's not really fair because there's many, many people out there that don't have the time or don't have the, you know, the thingy to keep a reef, but they may have ridiculous amount of information available to them yeah. to be able to, you know, to explain. But it's definitely true, though, because people will definitely, you know, um, listen to you a lot more if you've got something behind you to say, mm -hmm. this is what I'm telling you, and here you go, you know, this proves it, so to speak. So, you know, it's it, it, it did make a, a good point, and I want to sort of, like, create that now. You know, I've created that many tanks now over my YouTube life, but I've never stuck them out. You know, I've always changed them, and I've never been able to create that business card so to mm -hmm. speak so this one should be because water changes are easy yep the last one was near impossible you know <laughs> i can run it just like the last one mm -hmm. you know i can do you know refusions and stuff like that and then like what you do just do you know just nice easy water changes. little ones just, yeah just little water changes just to get rid of that built up crap you know what i mean not necessarily to do anything drastic it's more just to just to keep on top of it a little bit, yeah. you know what I mean? So I, I can do that now. Um, so well, well, I, I love this one. So speaking of that, what I do, um, I used to only do five. I've created to 10 gallons a week I do on my tank now. I try to, not every week, most weeks. But I dump 10 gallons into my sump, and then I suck it out of the tank. So the water on my tank never changes. I let all my pumps, everything just run. And just, yeah, just do that. Just little ones here and there. My nano gets five gallons. The big one gets five or ten on how motivated I am. But it's quick. You don't have to turn off pumps, you do nothing, and it's just like prevention of issues. Yeah. So I did my first water change last Sunday on this just to see how it goes. Yep. And 
it um I did I did a 20% change, mm-hmm. which was only 120 liters, whereas the last one was just like that was a 10% change. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I can do a nice water change on this. Full gravel vac as well. That's the only everything was gravel vac. Yep. And so we've got all of the, you know, the diatoms and everything that was building up and managed to suck a lot of that out. The water in the bucket was disgusting. Considering mm. the tank was only a week old at that point. Mm. Uh, it was just disgusting. And then now everything's really settled down, everything's nice, and you know, you can just get that that fresh feeling, if you know what I mean, you know, mm-hmm. with, a, with a water change. And I've always been very anti-water changes because I don't like them, but I found it a little bit therapeutic because it wasn't demanding on me. Try, it. Right. yeah. It very demanding. Try, yeah. try, try it the way I do it, though. Like, literally just dump it a bucket into your sump and then pull some out. Like, I find it so quick and easy doing it this way. For whatever reason, no turn off pumps, nothing. Your tank doesn't miss a beat. Like, I don't know. I just find it really quick and efficient. And then I'll do them because it doesn't take me long. The only problem with me is there's, there's four kids in this house. There's a wife, real one. There's a dog. There's a cat. There's turtles. And there is 100% something that is going to distract me whilst I'm doing it. So if I dump a load of water in, yeah. somebody will go, Michael. And I'm like, what? And then the next thing, <laughs> I'll get that water just overflowing again. So I've got to make sure I, if I keep everything in order so that I can't break anything. <laughs> nice. Fair enough. It works. Um, it already scrolled off the screen, so before I forget, they're asking about your screen top and if you get condensation on it at all with the little holes in the acrylic top. Yeah, so I do get condensation buildup. Um, and what I've done as well is I've taken the Senai mm-hmm. and put it, I've put it through the little gap where I've got my wire gap, and I've just placed it on top of the rock and I've left it to see what that condensation does mm-hmm. and it doesn't affect the path. Not a big deal. No hot spot little laser beams you're good i think that's basically what it does all it does is where the light may have hit this point Mm -hmm. without the condensation now it probably goes like that or like that but all of the thing is combined it just like a disco ball effect type thing doesn't look like a disco ball but i'm just getting that the light rather than going straight down just goes a different way okay i've not it's not giving me an issue at all okay perfect uh another one for scrolls off G Day Reefing. Hey Mike, what do you think about the 300 series compared to the 200 series? I'm assuming that's the jar. Night and day. Yeah. Um, yeah, night and day. Um, the smaller, first of all. Um, the silent now. Nice. You know, in the past, especially if you got to like 60% on pulse with the 200 series, you get that. Mm, mm, hmm. mm, no that more? Night. No, nothing. Like, nice. again, listen. <laughs> nice. Listen. That's good. It's, honestly, the gyres themselves are silent, and these um, they've got these flow directors on the top now. Mm-hmm. And you can see yep. how close they are to the surface. They're probably about that far away from the surface. Mm-hmm. So because they're that far up, when I look through the side, it doesn't ruin my view. Nice. You know, because I've not got one here. Not, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the night and day, you know, and obviously you can control them. I can control them all through my phone now. Nice. I'm using the full MaxSpec system, so I like I can literally put my phone into feed mode and it'll turn my skimmer off, my return pump off and my gyres off. Yeah. Just point. So yeah, it's one it's button's the, nice. Nice. One button's I, I appreciate it. They're quieter now. Uh, Philip was asking, what is your opinion on dosing phytoplankton? Have your SPS reacted? How much do you dose? Um, I like to dose it. I have zero consistency. I have some in my fridge and I, whenever I think about it, which is probably, you know, one week, it could be one time, another week it could be three or four times. And I still scientific glug into the power head and let it disperse in the tank. Usually that night time. Uh, it's hard to quantify if the SPS, how they react to it. Um, however, plankton is kind of one of the base foods of the ocean. It feeds, it'll increase your pod population. You know, I have stuff like Argonians and filter feeders that appreciate it. So I think there's benefits. It's hard to hundred percent say, yes, this amazing change happened, but it is, you know, kind of one of the base foods of the ocean. So I think there's benefits to it. Mm. Have you ever done I'm, I'm the same as you. Like mm. it's not some, I know, I know that it is, it's, it's, if, if phytoplankton, phytoplankton didn't exist, Mm-hmm. we wouldn't you know what i mean it's, it it's provides like half of the food. oxygen in the world yeah and that's it and it, yeah. you know it's not just the trees that does it as well and it you know it wouldn't be able to provide the food that we need you know etc 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 so hmm. you know it, it's the lifeblood and, and it should be for our tanks the only thing is 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 it's not easy to get 
especially not where I live, you know, mm -hmm. it's not easy to get. And to get like a, a little bottle, you know, it's not cheap either. So you can get that gel form stuff, um, which you put in, mm -hmm. you know, you can, I think like easy reefs do one, which you can put onto a doser, yep. but I'm like you though. I'm just inconsistent with it. You know, mm. now that I've got that room in the back, yep. I may get a second doser and just have a second doser running all mm -hmm. that type of stuff like that. Yep. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, I know it's great. I'm just inconsistent yep. with it. Like you. I don't think anyone needs it, but I think there's benefits to doing it. Um, mm. I also culture pods, which I randomly dump in my tank, and I feed the pods phytoplankton, right? And that's how I get them to keep surviving and reproducing. So by dosing into your tank is also going to help boost up your pod population. So I mean, right there is like one for sure benefit of it. Um, there's there's likely a lot more. It's just hard to say 100%. But yeah. Um, so Stefan's asking, does changing the max output of powerhouse at different times of day have an effect on the inhabitants vs just using the set value of the time? I like random modes. Um, I like posting if you want to do the gyre, if you want to do like pulsing or, you know, the random reef crest type modes. It's, I think variety is a good thing for your corals. You don't want to be hitting them the same way with flow all the time. So bringing it up and down and different pulses and different stuff, I think there's advantages to it. Definitely. You yep. know, I have mine on lunar tidal mode, so it's completely random all day. Mm -hmm. And best way to think about it is imagine you're a coral and someone's got like an air gun blowing in your face yep. the same way just constantly you're just like just constant and it's if it never lets up it's it's draining you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's like you're gonna be like oh you know it might not be killing you but it's it's draining you whereas if you turn it off for a minute then it's like oh that's a bit better oh well, here we go again you know what i mean but it's all right in small bursts it's like when you open the window in a car and it's like red red off and you open the window you get a cool breeze it's like oh that's nice but you yeah. leave it for too long and it's too cold so it's <laughs> cold the window again you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. a bit like that like that the coral is the same whereas it doesn't want to just be constantly smashed in one place um you know get that randomness around it plus as well if mm -hmm. you've got things like anti plates any form of plates you need to get that randomness because otherwise crap will land on the plate and it'll mm -hmm. never move because there's nothing to lift it back off again and then that part of your plate will die because it's just covered and mm -hmm. then you'll lose corals and stuff and same with your acros and everything else as they get bigger and bigger and tighter and tighter colonies if stuff gets in there then it can't get back out again because there's nothing to flush it out and vice versa you know the mm -hmm. stuff that's inside can't have food delivered to it can't you know Get that good random flow and then you'll yep. you'll be set. Flow flow is the very most important. important thing in your reef tank. Forget lights, you know, mm -hmm. lights you can you know you can get away with for days and days and days without lights. Try going a couple of days or a day without flow. Done. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everything yeah, everything will be done. <laughs> yep. Um yes, flow is very important. Hundred percent agree with you on that one. Uh uh, David was asking, is it bad to take water straight from tank? I have no idea what you mean with that one, but no. Um, if you're doing a water change, suck water out. I mean, that's all good. I do mine. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you take water from wherever you want. Um, Brett Calm, why did you stop using Triton? Why are you still using Triton? <laughs> I stopped using Triton because I wanted to try something different. Um, yeah. And if I'm honest, the product that I'm using now is a product that I sell as my job so you know it, it's part and parcel you know what i mean so now my tank is my tank it isn't a part of my job so if i didn't feel confident in the product i wouldn't put it on my tank you know what yep. i mean because at the end of the mm -hmm. day this is my baby you know I, all of my money's going into this yeah so um I've, i actually visited the company in germany um a couple, about a month ago and I had to sit down with the CEO of the company and he explained everything to me. And this is how my face looked when he was talking to me. <laughs> yeah. It was mind blowing what goes into the products, mm -hmm. how the products are created, what they've done. You know, he took me into the laboratory, showed me all of the different things. You will have seen it on the live stream because the live stream while I was there. Mm -hmm. By the time I'd finished that visit, I was like, I am 100% doing this product, this regime. And bonus, it only takes three dosing heads instead of four. There you go. 
Winner. You so gotta... really, there is nothing wrong with Triton at all. Triton changed the game for me. Triton mm. changed me from a struggling reefer to a prospering reefer. And mm. all it's all I've done now is, you know, just moved on to a different regime. Mm. Whichever one you decide to choose, in essence, they're all really sort of like the same thing. Calcium, alk, magnesium. The big with, three are consistent. With, yeah, yeah, that's it. With trace elements bobbed in, you know what I mean? Um, whether you're using another company's color program or whatever else, at the end of the day, certain things like boron and whatever affect certain colors in your coral. Mm -hmm. And that's all you get, whether mm -hmm. it's this company or that company or the other. It just depends on whether or not this company or that company are providing you with a certain quality of products. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just got to think about it that way. And whichever one you choose, if you're confident in that brand, go for it. Yeah, exactly. The The biggest thing is whatever brand you do is just get your parameters stable and keep them stable. That's at the end of the day. That's the biggest key aspect of it all. Yeah, 100%. You know, it doesn't really matter what name is written on the bottle yep. as long as that product is a proper, clean, nice, works well product and you go up, you sound. Yep, exactly. Noah's asking, what are you going to do when Coraline LG gets in the corners? You just don't let it get there. I'm going to put an urchin in the tank because I don't want Coraline algae to get anywhere. Wait, 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 wait. Supposedly, urchins can actually take chunks out of acrylic or mark them or scratch them or something. Caution on that one. I've heard that. Ooh, I know. know that. I know. Ooh. So maybe not. Get into that one. Yep. Has, anybody, has anybody in the chat now got an acrylic tank? Uh, and if you had an <laughs> acrylic tank for an extended period of time, I'd be interested to yep. see what your thoughts have been because Americans seem to be the acrylic kings really when it comes to tanks because mm. it's not, I don't know anybody in this country that's got an acrylic tank unless you're talking a really, really big one. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Quick shout out, Ryan Gill, $5 super chat. Been a while since I've been in your live stream. Glad to see you're still doing your thing. I enjoy it. Thank you very much, Ryan. And welcome back. And thanks for the $5 super chat nice yep um yes so if anyone does have acrylic um i've heard that as well about urchins and acrylic from phil reef keeper so yeah i i would be cautious on that one i do know a guy that has a big acrylic tank and when he had built up a coralline he basically told me he had some like magnetic suction thing that he had vinegar inside to dissolve it or some elaborate way but the biggest thing i would just make sure you keep up on it and don't let it build up in the first place because when stuff well, that, that, that's the thing is because the whole idea for this tank was the tank was supposed to be invisible. That mm -hmm. was the whole point. Yep. That's the reason why I went acrylic. That's the reason why the backing is white. Um, everything, there was supposed to be no attention drawn to anything other than the skate. That's why the cabinet itself is concrete, because I wanted to sort of like create a, do you know, like one of those museum, you know, when you have like the podium mm -hmm. in a museum. So that's obviously the concrete block. That's the podium, and then the scape is the artwork. Obviously, something needs to be around it to keep the water in, but I didn't want any focus to be on the tank itself. So that's why I've not blacked the back out, because yep. if you black the back, it just deadens your eye. It just stops you dead. Fair. So I frosted the back, and then everything, you know, just should just look sweet. So mm -hmm. the whole idea is, is I need to keep it clean. You know, that's the reason why I've got those sponges. That's the reason why I've got that flipper scraper etc just to okay. make sure it yes. off of it. so daily reefing mr jeff he says he has three urgents in his tank and it's not an issue so that's a good one um do 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 aloha reefer i have a flipper mag cleaner on my acrylic tank for years and another guy it's joe jojo um i have a acrylic tank and i scrape core line with an old credit card there you go got options well, that's what that's yeah i'll get it oh, you're gonna see my uh Brilliant, thanks again. <laughs> you know, another great thing about this cupboard, straight in, get my stuff. But I got this. So, like you're saying about a credit mm -hmm. card, that's all it is. Yep. So you can put your credit card in it if you wanted, but, you know, just a card. Yep. So that's it, and then I can scrape away. So that is going to be a big thing for anything that get stubborn, but I'm hopefully not going to be letting anything get to that point. As soon as I see a speck of Coraline, it's coming off. Yep. That's the anyway. biggest thing is just keep up on it. 
Um, okay, so feet for fish, long spine urchins, and my acrylic tank have always been no problem. Oh, there you go. I take so it I'm back. Gonna, Whoever I'm told me it, I don't remember. <laughs> but... mm -hmm. I'm not going to get the long spines, the pin cushions, because they're they are wrecking balls. I found that blue tuxedo urchins are quite content. Give them a Zola, you know, let them put a Zola on the red. They're content then, you know what I mean? They don't touch anything else. Whereas pink cushion urchins, they're never content. They'll pick up everything and then they'll dump it somewhere else and pick something else up. They just don't need it. <laughs> so on that note, um, some, I had a, a chunk of clove polyps on part of my rock and I wanted to get rid of it. So I don't know if you ever saw Jimmy Paul Carlson's tank from Vegas. He was saying that he uses urchins to eat clove polyps. So I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So I saw someone post one. I was like, all right, I want them. I'll trade you. And they brought them over. And this was like Godzilla. It's like the biggest freaking urchin I've ever seen for a pink cushion. So he was literally like a wrecking ball in my tank. Within like minutes, he's just like had like eight snails on his back and like half my tank. So I traded him to a buddy for a smaller urchin. And then this one wouldn't touch the club pop. So that was a bit of a lost cause. But yeah, anyways, it's just like the amount of stuff he was lugging around the tank was crazy. The little tentacles touching. It's like mine, 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 mine. Just loading it up. It's kind of funny, but <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. That I found I had a I had a pink pin cushion and I had a blue tuxedo. The blue tuxedo picked up three zoas, popped it on its head, <laughs> and it was fine. Then the three zoas turned into thirteen. You know, they all just grew. <laughs> a a yeah. roving colony of zoas. It literally grew a colony of um, <laughs> everlasting gobstoppers on his head. Oh, that's and awesome! He, I never ever picked anything else up you know you could see mm. the clean lines where the urchin have been that they are probably one of the best when it comes to cleaning your rocks honestly they are brilliant um but then the pink pin cushion mm -hmm. would again he picked up some zoas so far i actually gave them the zoas i went yeah the pin cushion the the, the um the blue urchin's happy so we have them put them mm -hmm. on took them straight away and he's happy literally he moved this far and he dislodged an, um, a Monty plate and put that on him. He dislodged, you know, stuff. He found stuff that I didn't even know was there. And he was walking <laughs> around with this, this coral bling <laughs> all over him. And then he was like, I'm bored of all this now. Drops it somewhere and then go and picks up new stuff <laughs> within 24 hours. My oh, that's awesome. Is a mess. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like one of those collector crabs, whatever they're called. It's like put stuff oh, all over yeah. their bodies. Same thing, eh? Yeah, never get a decorator crab if you've got high end zoas. <laughs> oh, I know it's great. Reef community worldwide. I haven't seen you in a while. Hey, Paul, how are you? Uh, Michael and Nick Chad are legends. Thank you for your help. My tank is now off huge coral growth happening, even with my acropora growing. Can't thank you guys enough. I will unveil it on Instagram. That's from Ryan Shackleton. Look forward to seeing it, Ryan. Excellent, excellent. Have you got a bigger tank yet, or have you just, are you still using the same one? Because Ryan was originally using like a, I think it was a fluval tank with a canister filter. He's using a, an FX6 or an FX4. Yeah. Um, and he had a really, really beautiful um, Euphilia garden, mm -hmm. and it was very minimal. It was only like two or three pieces of rock, but what he'd done with what he had was really, really nice. So if he's nice. upgrading, that'll, uh, that'll look pretty cool. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> 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 sounds about right yeah oh so the other thing is urchins too eat coralline algae so i i have big strips of white against all my purple rock wherever he's been yeah no i i don't like coralline algae so i'm happy for him to eat it uh, <laughs> really yeah just obviously it's all stemmed from like when we used to use rocks as as filtration like nowadays it won't make any difference because we mm -hmm. use media in the sun for mm -hmm. filtration but when we used to use rocks as our biological filter where our bacteria live, coralline algae encrusts over them rocks and it shuts them down. You know, there's no there's nowhere for the bacteria to live because it's like got this coralline algae film mm -hmm. around. So the rock becomes less efficient. So I didn't like it because yes. it so semi sear logic. Mine looks so, funny now because it's just like purple with like white strips randomly on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm not bothered if it um if it grows, yeah. it, I'm not too fussed on this one because mm -hmm. obviously the scape is the scape. The, the filters, the tanks, the display, the filters, the filter in this tank. So if it grows, yeah. it grows. I'm that's fair. Carry Reefer 500, Carry Reefer 500. That's a double long name. Thank you very much for the $2 super chat. <laughs> much appreciated. 
Ah, lost my screen. There we go. Is that name doubled? Yeah. Double. Oh, Carrie Reefer. Follow Times him, two, 500, 500. 500, yeah. Carrie for Carrie Reefer. You've got to say his name 500 times. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, like the candy man. you got to say his name, but you got to do it 500 times in the mirror. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. <laughs> yeah, follow him on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Paul, I've been in bed, got the notification, thought to say hi. I've been away a while renovating. Ah, oh, very nice. You'll have to give us a tour sometime, Paul. You had the extra new tank one on too. How's that one doing if it's still up and going? Uh, Aloha Reef. I put Velcro on the wet side of the flipper mag so it can attach acrylic cleaning pads like I use on the hammerhead float mags. Works really well for acrylic. Hmm. That'd scare me that though. Yeah. You know, it's... just in case it moves or, you know, the Velcro, you know, what Velcro's like, pick mm. something up. That'd scare me that. Pick up though. Yeah. When sand gets blown in there and in then, in crying it. yourself yeah, to right. sleep. You'd have to yeah. get like a, like a air compressor to get it out. Oh no. <laughs> Very true. I mean, even scared to just use the flip as it is. Never mind, you know, mess about with it. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, he, he wants to be in this live stream. Don't Your crab? Is he back at the glass again? He totally does. He's like, what's up, guys? <laughs> he's been there all day. Since, we, since I set this like, thing up with you, he's been walking up and down the glass. But if you notice that, he's never behind my chair. He's always <laughs> like to the side of the chair. Which I'm he's watching. He needs to see he what you're up to. He wants to be on the stream. <laughs> he's trying to will you to give him food or something he's like looking at you it's like esp where are you going <laughs> uh that's awesome uh dan are asking hey guys 10 gallon mix nano any tips on finding a missing orange stripe goby i haven't seen him in over a month and thought about replacing but wonder if he's alive in there uh, a month is a bit of a long time Rasses, i know on one hand they can definitely hide for weeks gobies usually aren't quite as bad there's a chance he could be hiding in a little cave somewhere and only come out at night, but there's also a chance if you have other cleanup crew that if he did bite the dust that they may have devoured his carcasses overnight and you may never find something. So it's kind of 50-50 on that one. Yeah, I um, I had a goby. I had a chalk goby a long time ago. And when I went to bed, mm -hmm. it was there. You know, I could see it. Um, it was just chilling next to the rocks. When I got up in the morning, nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, scouted around, couldn't find it, and then I found this little white spine. Oh yeah! So in the night, they stripped it clean. So it must have been when I saw it at that night. It must have been like ready for popping its clogs or something. Mm -hmm. And then the cleanup crew had stripped it in the night. And if I wouldn't have seen that little spine, I would have never even. But the lap, the the sort of like transparent as well, so they're easy to miss. Yeah. So if, if it's if it's a goby, like you know, like you said, it's. Uh, it's potentially, if you've not seen it for a couple of weeks, it's probably gone. But if you've got a 10 gallon and it's not stupidly packed, take a rock out and see. Very easily take a rock out and check. Mm hmm. Yeah. Paul has not checked his aquarium in weeks. Paul, slacking, man. I haven't, I haven't touched it in two weeks. It's looking better than ever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's always a way in it. You know, when you don't do anything, it always looks better. And then you go, Ooh, I need to move that, and then they're all held very clean. There's some, there's something to be said about not having your hands in the tank every day, and I, I'm like the worst culprit of that ever because my tankers are constantly in the tank. I have a hard time not touching something in my tank every day, and not putting your hands in, getting those oils and whatever else is in the tank is probably a big benefit. So That's I definitely the reason why I've got lids as well. Because keep you up. It's that little bit, little bit of an extra faff to take them off. Mm hmm. It's, it stops you from doing anything. You know, sometimes it'll be the case of you'll just put your hand in for the sake of putting your hand in. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, because I've got to take the lid off and move it out of the way, it's like, oh, I can't bother. <laughs> so it's a good deterrent. <laughs> That's fair. That's a good point. Um, so, okay, someone was asking, did you use any bacteria in your tank? Yes, I did. I used um, Fritzyme 9. Um, I use that in my tank to get it going. I always use bacteria. I don't think mm -hmm. I've ever, even even my very, very, very first reef tank, I use bacteria. I've never, I've never been one for a traditional cycle. Um, and by traditional cycle, I mean by 
you know, adding some form of ammonia to to the tank Mm -hmm. and waiting for bacteria to come in existence. I've been lucky because I'm quite a new reefer, so all of this stuff existed when I started. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I've never really been one for doing a traditional cycle. The way I sort of like to see it is, you know, nowadays you can bake your own bread if you want to. Do you know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. why would you bother when you can just go to the shop and buy bread? (laughs) And that's the way I see bottled bacteria, you know. You're just cutting out a stage of the process that you don't need to you don't need to do anymore. So yeah, I use the Fritzheim nine on this tank. Nice. I'm with you. Ever since my first tank, I've always used bottle bacteria. Just I had the rock before the tank in one of them. I used live rock from someone else's tank, my very first tank, and then when I upgraded to a bigger tank, I literally just had it living in a brute can with a bottle of Dr. Tim's for like months of pre cycle fire of the tank. Now yeah, mm. I, don't, I don't do that, I just throw it in and start it off. So, but I didn't have a tank yet. I just wanted to get the oh. rock rolling. So I yeah. skipped, skipped the line later. Um, so something actually I thought it would be good to touch on. I get asked a lot, how long should people wait until they add corals to the tank? And now looking behind you, you know, your <laughs> tank is two weeks old and you got tons of acros. You got lots of coral in there already. I mean, there's nothing in your tank, but your fish are in quarantine. There's corals in the tank. So yeah, it, you so- can, you can have corals in your tank from day one, basically, right? They're not the ones that are affected by the cycle as much as like a fish or something would. Now, just like an example, I before I had a 30-gallon nano, before I upgraded to my bag tank, I bought a bunch of coral that would physically not fit in my nano. I had it living in a five-gallon bucket for over a month with a heater and a power head. I just give it a water change once a week. So literally, you can throw it in right away. Mm. Well, look, the... The thing is, we all know what a coral needs. It needs mm-hmm. stability. You know what I mean? It needs it needs what it needs. It needs its you know the right type of levels, and it just needs to keep them stable. Now, with using bottled bacteria and stuff, you know you'll do a, your initial cycle because you know obviously the cycle never finishes. But your initial cycle, you'll do that. I did. You know you'll do it in four days or less. You know I did mine in mm-hmm. four days. But even during that four day period. The ammonia never went any higher than 0.015, which if you was using a salifert test kit, that mm. would be zero. You wouldn't even get a reading on a salifert test kit. But because I use the Senai, you get that even more accurate result. So what 0.015 isn't toxic, no way near, you know, the fish won't even notice it, the corals won't even notice it. Um, it's when you start getting, you know, zero to five and above, I think mm-hmm. zero point zero point five, that's when you're toxic. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I never even got into that digit. So, you know, obviously the initial cycle never even got to a level where it would hurt a fish or hurt a coral. And then by day four, it was down to 0.001 and it doesn't go any lower than that on the Senai. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's basically zero and that's where it stayed um i've had it come up a little bit today um let me see if i can find it it's come up a little bit today because i did a massive feed yesterday mm-hmm. of coral food yeah. because i'm trying to get my nutrient levels up because my nitrates are low mm-hmm. uh, so i'm currently sat at 0.016 when it comes to ammonia but again that's not even anywhere near toxic and even though I'm at that, like you said, I've got acros in here, I've got chalices, I've got lobos, I've got mm-hmm. um, astrias, I've got a clam, you know, all these different things. They're not fussed. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. They're happy. Happy as a clam, but no clams yet. <laughs> but it's just making sure that everything's stable. So obviously I'm testing every day to make sure that, you know, my alkalinity, if it moves, I need to dose for that etc etc so that's the main thing if you are going to put corals in early you need to be ready to provide for them from day one you know what i mean Mm -hmm. no very very true um ryan was saying same tank new scape i love proving people wrong when they say you can't run a reef tank on a canister nope certainly can just more work to clean it (laughs) yeah so that's all it is really just just a little bit more effort with a canister filter than it is a sump I mean, you don't even need a sump technically, right? A sump's just a place to hide all your equipment. A sump is a canister filter, just basically. With, and, yeah, with just different orientation, and the canister filter's got a tight lid where some doesn't. Yeah, you know, 
it's the only real dif real difference. Mm -hmm. The biggest advantage for me to have a sump is to hide everything. I don't like personally. I don't like seeing any equipment. I like to hide everything as possible. So being able to put absolutely everything I don't want to see into the sump keeps it nice and good. Well, I, you know, obviously with this tank, this is the epitome of that. You know, oh. you can't see the wires from mm -hmm. the light because I put them in trunking. You know, same with the wires of the gyres. All of the inside of the cabinet of the. Uh, oh inside of the cabinet there you know all the wires and everything are all in, apart from one wire because i'm actually running um a reactor at the moment which is just a plug-in one mm -hmm. but everything else just go through the, where those pipes are there yep all the wires just go behind there through the wall into the cupboard behind and everything is just hidden you know nice. everything everything that has to be on display is on display everything that doesn't i've hidden so beautiful just all nice neat and tidy mm -hmm. I like it. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a couple people are asking, how's the reef bot? The reef bot has been really, really good for me because we all know I'm a lazy reefer. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? Fair. You know, when Paul Reef Community Worldwide was doing um, Test Tuesday, that was probably the most I've ever tested in my life, probably. Every Tuesday we used to test. So, you know, I don't, I, and then when Test Tuesday finished, so did my testing. <laughs> but the reef bot, because it does it for me, I test it, I test alkalinity every day. Yes, I you do. I never <laughs> that. I said, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it tests the alkalinity every day. I don't do it. It mm -hmm. just sends a ping to my phone. Mm -hmm. This is an alkalinity reading. Job done. Thank you. Yeah. And That's nice, isn't it? It's, oh, it's brilliant. You know, it's just, me and you, we we are tech geeks, aren't we? We, we love are. our cameras, we love our everything and all that lot. But I've always been a bit of a an old fuddy duddy when it comes to tank um, automation. That's actually yeah. funny, considering you're like teching everything else except for That's your tank up until. Why. It just seems to be like I think what it was was just price. You, you know, you didn't find the right one yet. <laughs> yeah, and I think what it was was just I never, I never appreciated what they did to the cost. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, this reef box, not cheap. You know, it's like a thousand pounds in this country. Yeah. Um, so it's not cheap. But like I said, in these past fourteen days, I've tested my alkalinity fourteen times. Sometimes more if I've just wanted to do an extra one to see what it's like from the morning to the e at evening. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You know, and I would never do that because I haven't got the time. It's testing my alkalinity. It's testing my nitrates. Mm -hmm. you know I, mean? I could get it to test my phosphate. So I'm going to get it to do the essentials. Yeah. Phosphates, alkalinity, and then, you know, I'll put calcium on there um, as well. It'll only do, um, it has eight slots. So mm -hmm. normally the test kits are two slots each. So four, so, four tests. You know what I mean? So you'll just get those in. Um, but so far, it's just been brilliant so mm. that's a bit of tank automation that nice. never would have dreamed to have yeah i've got it that's Can't awesome it. if it if it was me i would do elk once a day i would do calcium mag maybe or nutrients like nitrophosphate like once a week mm. it'd be good and the thing is like it's like once phosphate yeah definitely like once a week because phosphate can change at any period of time you know if you put a little bit more food in than you used to putting in you know something happens something dies or whatever your phosphates are going to go up yeah. nitrates can normally stay pretty stable unless you go daft and create tons of ammonia by again by putting too much of something in or something dying or whatever nitrates never tend to be once you've got them to a certain level they tend to stay there whether it's you know a lot of people complain because they're at 25 mm -hmm. but they're at 25 day in and day out you know it doesn't go up Consistent. it doesn't go down it just stays there stable it's okay mm -hmm. You know yep. I mean? it's not the end of the world um but you know with the phosphates that can creep up on you every single day and before mm -hmm. you know it if you're not testing it you'll be like at one and yeah you know, algae everywhere and it's just mm -hmm. it's a mess so yeah um i'll be testing phosphate at least once a week um alkaline it'll be every day currently calcium's every day because i'm trying to work out trends between what happens with my alk and what happens with my calcium currently mm -hmm. my calcium's not moving and my alkalinity 
has dropped by 0. 0.2 in about three days. Yeah. So, you know, that'll change as everything starts to settle because obviously I put a lot of coral in last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, so once they start finding the feet and starting settling, then obviously that'll change. Yeah. Nice. That'll well, be good. All right. So James had a question. Hey, lads, can't seem, can't get shut of them. Uh, silicates are reading zero in RO water, have loads of cleanup crew, bubble scrubbing every night, can clean all the rock the next day it's back. I think I was with diatoms. Uh, he says the tank's about a year old. So diatoms are usually a sign of the tail end of a cycle. So that may be, I don't know how long it's been happening, but if it's something that's just recently, it could very well be that something in your tank caused a mini cycle and this is kind of the tail end of it. You can't really fight diatoms. Diatoms are just going to come back. Like certain cleanup crew will eat it or do whatever. Like I know um, Orange Lip Conch Snail in my tank always, you know, would munch on that. But they literally would just, you know, they run their course and they'll go away on their own. So it's something you don't really want to fight. Um, it also could be something if you're dosing trace elements. I know too much iron or certain trace elements will give you that kind of brown, dusty look on your sand bed. I get a little bit of that when I dose trace elements once a week for a day or two and it kind of goes away. So depending, it could be one of the two of those. Yeah, you could have dinos as well, cat ear as well, which is thinking. Um, <clears throat> crews, actually. Mm -hmm. Um who I've come off the sub bench for. <laughs> Cruz has just put a thing out on Facebook. So if, I think it's Elegant Corals or something. If you have a look, um, Cruz Ares has just put out like this full list of how to get rid of um, Cyano. And ah, yes. Yep. Team. That was so gonna... <laughs> cool thing there. Um, so if you're ever struggling with diet diatoms or Cyano or anything like that, there's a list. I don't know if you can link to it or put it up or something oh but, i sure uh, can i have it on my desktop that was actually we we're actually going to talk about it tonight but uh cruz had a double book for a work meeting so it's now next next week we're going to talk about it the updated regime yeah. but i'll post it to the facebook groups so it's easy to find yeah so have a look at that so if you're ever struggling you know try the process mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a pretty easy process you only need a few bits to be able to do it um there's one bit of equipment that i'd struggle with because they're not available here which is the tums aqua lifter um you can use that, any air pump though but any air that's just a cheap one that works well get into a clean air area mm -hmm. so don't put the air pump into your cabinet <laughs> very true so speaking of that i'm just going to post it right now so it's easy to find and if anyone needs it they get it so uh seahorse whisperer has just asked if i'm going to macna this year no <laughs> no can't afford it this year it's that um Disneyland, Disney World or something. Um, and it'll cost me a fortune and I've just spent an absolute fortune on this, you know. Um, so I can't afford it this year. I'd love to go. I would mm -hmm. definitely and I really wanted to do a show this year just to see everybody more than anything. Um I was supposed to be going to Core um in New England, but um <laughs> I arranged it. Ah, uh, I thought Ooh. I heard rumors of you potentially going. Yeah, but <laughs> It only, it turned out it was my 10th wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's a very valid reason. So when I said to my missus, um, I'm going to New England for the weekend. When? Beginning of May. Right, okay then. And then that was that. But the face said something to me. You know, just okay then. But the face said a different story. So I was like, why did you look at me like that? No, do what you want. And I'm thinking, whoa, I've done something wrong here. What have I done wrong? Oh. And then... Uh, that's our anniversary weekend. I was like, oh. Yep. So, yeah. Couldn't go. <laughs> there was another show that I couldn't attend for similar reasons. <laughs> that's it. So, yep. I was supposed to be, I was thinking about doing Aquashella, Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, but after this tank, I've spent too much money and I can't afford it. So, I don't think I'll be doing any shows in America this year. Unless uh, any of the American show um, operators would like to bring over this legend to <laughs> hear your show. <laughs> there you go. That'll, that'll you, never, you never know. If somebody pays for it, I'll come. <laughs> Good excuse. I wholeheartedly would agree. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if not, maybe next year we'll try and pick one to both go to. Yes. Well, next year what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to make sure that I put a pot to the side. Um, mm -hmm. I really want to do... See... I like the idea of Reef of Palooza, but the only thing with Reef of Palooza for me is, is it's, it's a tease because 
you can buy all of these corals, you can look at all these corals, but I can't take them home. So I don't know if I fancy Reef of Palooza, but just because I can't do anything there, you know what I mean? Whereas Macna, Macna to me was a very good social spot. Mm-hmm. Less, you know, I, I got to meet so many people that's in this chat and I loved it. You know what I mean? The show was great, but the people was the best part. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So next year, you know, I'll see where Macna is next year. And then, you know, if it's somewhere doable, then I'll probably plan for Macna next year. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. Give me well, time to save it as well. Yeah, we'll see when it's closer, but keep me updated. It'll be good. Uh, do, 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 do. Make sure I know I won it. I won in on that show. All right. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll pick one and make like a big meetup or something. We'll do something fun. Yeah, we'll sort something out because if whoever the operators are of the show, I'm sure they'll work with us to do something wicked. Like they did the YouTube booth, didn't they, last time? Mm-hmm. Which all of us booked out, and I think only you and Richard used. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, well, I did the interview with Charlie there, but that was what it, Charlie yeah, Biron. Yeah, I, I didn't even do that. Um, it was a lot of socializing. It was fun, though. It's good. It's good to meet people in person. That's one thing that's fun about all the shows is just meeting all these people you talk to online all the time and meeting them in person, making that connection. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it was like a seahorse whisperer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To meet her. We both had a couple of beers. It was great. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just, I remember when we was at Macna and I was sat there in the chair. I was sat there with Reef Community Worldwide, Woody, um, Chris Rose, um, Reefing with all, and we were just sat on the sofa and I was just like, my mouth was wide open and I was just scanning the room. And I was like, I was just surrounded by just aquarium legends, just everywhere you looked. Do you know what I mean? It was like, you know, there was all these different people there, just there. You know what I mean? And it was like, I can't believe it. Obviously being from the UK, I don't have easy access to these people like a lot of other people do. Mm-hmm. So I see them on the telly, so to speak. Yep. And there i can touch them you know what i mean it's great <laughs> oh by the way i need to be invited onto wine wednesday i've still not been invited onto wine wednesday it's your horse whisperer leaving us out that's what i mean i've not been invited onto wine wednesday yet i just think it's an absolute travesty <laughs> right right i know <laughs> oh. i've got wine as well i've just found a taste for wine so i might even drink a wine perfect Gotta do. We gotta do it if it in a white Wednesday. <laughs> uh, Greg, uh, don't discount rap about the social aspect. I do agree. I had a blast at Rap Orlando, and I went the last two years to Rap Orlando. It's been a lot of fun. I haven't been to any yeah. other raps, but maybe next year I'll try and hit a different one. There is plenty of people. Like, I oh don't yeah. Know oh yeah. Rap. It was super busy. Was it? Yep. Just watch Good. my video. <laughs> I did watch your video. I didn't want your video just a coral montage. Maybe. <laughs> I, watched, I, watched, I watched that video where it was just for about 20 minutes. Just coral. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's not helping. I don't know who's there. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's true. <laughs> I watched um, Richard's video today. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I watched that with you too. Oh, that was fun. The rockscaping competition? Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> yes sir that was good i was pretty stoked richard richard and i rocked it pretty good and it went the victory was even sweeter because um reef news i work peter and jeremy they're doing all well mainly peter but they're doing all this trash talking before how they're gonna like work the youtubers so it made the victory extra sweet <laughs> a lot of pressure on that though isn't it? Do you know, in case you lose <laughs> it was fun though I, I had a lot of fun doing it i've never done one before but yeah it was a blast it was good we yeah. busted out pretty quick, so. Uh, yeah, it was busy as well. Oh, what yeah. Was it was packed. It was awesome. I thought they did for Scott and keep on reefing everything. It was awesome for us, like a smaller kind of regional or local show. Like it was busy. Like there's always stuff going on. It was fun. I had a good time. It would have been, it would have been perfect for me, that show as well, because mm-hmm. Mass Aquariums, um, you know, he's at Mass Aquariums. I've known him since now, since like, when I first started on YouTube, me and him more or less started YouTube at the same time. And we've been like, we've, we're that close now, me and Mass Aquariums, you know, you know, I can easily just jump on a plane, walk through his front door and he'll be just like, what are you doing here? And it'd yeah. be all right. I know. So we'd made a plan that I'd fly into Boston, yeah. he'd pick me up and then we'd drive down to Connecticut because it's only an hour and a half away from where he lives. 
So it was perfect. We go to the show, come back to his house, have something mm-hmm. to eat. I get back on a plane, boom. You know what I mean? There all planned, all nailed, and then bloody wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you're home alone right now. <laughs> it's his hands in the back of the screen. Whack. <laughs> <sighs> yep. <laughs> Oh, Greg, 5,000 plus attendees. You're sure to see plenty of Reef Rock stars. There you go. What uh, is that? Um, that I guess Reef and Palooza. Rap. There's a good chunk. Rookie, they have restock. The, Orlando one. The, the only thing with the Orlando one is it's right at the beginning of the year for me. Mm-hmm. So after Christmas and everything else, obviously having four kids, you know, Christmas hits hard. So it's hard to have the money available. And Orlando as well for me. Yep. It's an it's an expensive flight, just the flight. You know, you're talking seven, six, seven hundred pounds mm-hmm. for a flight, not including accommodation. Yep. <clears throat> so just to get there and back for the weekend with accommodation, you're talking well over a thousand pounds. And that's before I've eaten, before I've done anything else. Mm-hmm. So wrap's just a bit of a difficult one for me because of the cost. Yeah, it's pricey. You know, if I go to Boston, I can fly to Boston for three hundred quid. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. not as bad. Certain airports are just really expensive. That's weird, eh? Mm. Craziness. Rookie Reefer. And Reef Stock, Kadeer Sydney. Well, to either of you too. Hi, Sean. Oh, no. When oh, it comes so to that. Queensland, you should come. That'd be cool. Great Bear Reef Trip is calling. That would be awesome. Well, both of you guys have known me long enough to know for the fact that I'm not coming to Australia. Why? <laughs> I would. Everything to kill you. It's fine. I'll, pr- I'll protect you. Not a prayer. <laughs> Spiders this big, do you in? Getting your shoes, kill you. Scorpions, snakes, sharks, crocodiles. No. <laughs> no. R- Rookie can be our local bodyguard. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That'd be good. So, okay. for, to be honest, I, want, I, do what I, I do what I do in Australia because I want to meet uh, Sean again. I want to meet Rookie Reefer. Um, I want to meet the two gay reefers as well. Mm-hmm. They look like so fun, so much fun. I want to meet them. Um, who else? Uh, Parker's Reef. He's got a really good channel. Um, watch him. You know, just there'll be a good little meetup in Australia. Oh, yeah. You know, for YouTubers. Um, but I'd have to be on somebody's shoulders all day just in case there's something on the floor that can bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Koala bears. Koala bears. Look like the most cuddly, fluffy things everywhere, but they can rip your face off. <laughs> just, no, just, just, just don't piss them off. You'll be fine. <laughs> Literally, I have to go like this all day and just not touch or move or just stay still. <laughs> you funny. It'll be like we'll film Mike walking around like a horror movie. <laughs> Catch me in the car and I'm just like, oh, no, no. <laughs> don't eat me, kangaroo. Yeah, it'd be good. Oh, that's awesome. Well. It's been about an hour, and I know it's probably midnight for you by now. <laughs> yeah, quite past midnight. Now, That's so. fair. But um, yeah, if there are any other questions, let us know. But I think, I hopefully I didn't skip anybody's. I think I tried to get most of them as we went. All right, buddy. I think I'm going to call her for today. I'm keeping them under an hour-ish for summertime. Okay. Well, thank you for having me on. And don't forget, guys, it's the end of the month, and we all know what happens on the last Friday of the month. You have your own live stream, I hear. Yes, we've got the Aaron's Aquarium Friday night live stream. In Ooh. two days. Two days. So this Friday, I'm going to use this opportunity now. Mm-hmm. But this Friday, at 9 o'clock UK time, which is like 4 o'clock Eastern, I think, something like that, Friday night live stream. Um, I've got a giveaway as well to start on the Friday night live stream. Nice. So you can win something this week. Um and we'll just do what we normally do on the Friday night live stream. I'll be an idiot. I'll answer some of your questions. We'll have a laugh. Blah, blah, blah. There you go. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. I got one more legit question that pulled up before we go. Uh, Miguelito videos. I probably butchered that. I have a question. Uh, When should I continue dosing two part after a water change? Parameters are raised after water change. So ideally, the simplest solution is just to pick a salt that matches whatever parameters you keep your tank at, and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, however, if you are using an elevated salt, you could kind of skip a day of dosing, but the odds are you might forget about it, so I'd probably just leave it or maybe just shave off a mil off your dosing and it might balance it out. 
The but, best thing ever, really, is buy a balanced salt. Just yeah. get just get a good balanced salt. You know, don't get any of these elevated ones that mm-hmm. are ridiculous alkalinities or whatever else. Just get a, a salt that matches natural seawater and leave it at that. Then you've got a good foundation. Yeah. And then all you got to do then is just match that every single time. You know, if you do a water change, you might not need to dose for a day. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then next day, turn your doses back on. You know, yep. if you've got an aquarium control, you could even set it so that after today, start dosing again. Yeah, like that. So, exactly. Good balanced salt. You know, mm-hmm. there's many on the market, many different brands. Just find one that matches natural seawater as close as possible. Anything between seven and eight alkalinity. Um, and you'll be sound. Yep, 100% agree. So yeah, biggest thing, like whatever brand of salt, pick the one that matches whatever levels you keep your tank at, whatever's the closest. Then if you do a big water change, it's not going to have a big effect on your parameters and you're all good. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Michael, thanks for hanging out today. Good to see you. It's been a while. Thank you for inviting me. Happy Wednesday, everybody. And we will catch you guys next week. (laughs) Bye-bye.